screwed into the bottom of the mandrel. And normally the mandrel is not, doesn't have this part on it, right? Yeah. Okay, this is just my means to push and pull. I don't have draw work, so. And what I did is I come up with a rig where I had CO2, all right? And the way I found out about it was the day that my son shot me with the paintball. Paint <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I you know, that, that's pretty good little, uh, and with this small bottle, I don't have a lot of actuations, so, but I have plenty of CO2. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find any bigger ones while I was here. But, um, some of the key things that I'm going to show you is, um, I guess I need to hook this up. Okay. Another injury this week. <laughs> no. Um, we have an involute spline system. Okay, this is our drive system. The torque is transmitted from the drill pipe to the jar and then it's transferred down to this drive system. We have a female splines and now all your torque is now transferred to the OD, I mean the OD and not through the ID. From here all the way down, there is no torque. Okay, you pull up on this mandrel and you have three mandrels. You have what we call a drive system mandrel or spline mandrel we have a flow mandrel, which transfers the fluid from a high pressure to a low pressure chamber. And then we have what we call our balance mandrel down here on the bottom. And what this balance piston, on, I mean balance mandrel does on the back side is when I pick up, it's going to pick this piston up and it's going to move it in the upper direction. We're going to compress the hydraulic oil between these two pistons. We're going to compress it and now we have to release it somehow. And the way we release it is through an orifice okay or a jet valve is what we call it and once it releases you'll start to see it move up fairly slowly the valves will move up and once the valve hits a tripping lip internally mm -hmm. that will open up that's our detent inside the tool the hydraulic oil will now go from a high pressure to a low pressure which allows the hammer to accelerate up and hit the anvil mm -hmm. okay so the difference between this tool and the tool that you have out there is because, number one, you have a mechanical lock. You have to overcome that lock to even move it. You put a thousand PSI on this, I mean a thousand pounds, it will move it. That's a, to overcome the seal direct. So you could jar from anywhere from a thousand to three hundred thousand on an eight inch tool. Okay. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this thing up. As you can see right now, you see the pistons start to move upwards. We're compressing the fluid. The valves are moving up. There's a little tripping lip that you can just barely see right there. And when it comes in contact, it will open up, and now the hammer will go up and hit the anvil and cause the jar. Just cool. like this. Okay? That's awesome. Now, I don't have mask. Do I? I don't have any weight above me. I don't have any acceleration. So you can just see this is just... The pressure that I'm pushing you with. But if I didn't have that stretch of pipe, it wouldn't go all the way up. Now, I will back up. If you were to have a mechanical bump down, you could possibly jar down with not having 10 inches stretch of pipe. You could actually pull up and when the jar goes off, if he doesn't set the brake immediately, you could probably travel 10 inches. And you probably could travel and you probably could hit down. Okay, this is what we call fully extended. The tool is fully open. The mandrel is up against the the anvil, and now what we're doing is we're pulling on the material yield strength and not the overpull of the tool. The material yield strength on an eight inch is like a million pounds, but during jarring you could only pull three hundred thousand. Okay, we close it up. Put that weight on it. It closes up, everything goes back to a neutral place. And now if I want to jar down, I just simply stack weight on top of it. Now this piston moves downwards. This piston stays stationary. The valves move downwards. When they open up, now the hammer will come down and hit the anvil and turn it. Tool is symmetrical. If you run it upside down, right side up, it doesn't really matter.
Now, in this, this is a compression, mm -hmm. okay? So if your weight uh, below your bit is less than your weight on bit, you're gonna be running a jar in compression. So you will probably jar down when you go into compression, but you, what you do is you bleed it off at a very slow rate so you just don't put 60,000 pounds of jarring force on it. You know, you just let it go 10, 15,000, let it bleed off. It'll take a long time, probably four or five minutes for it to bleed through, but once it falls through, now you got your hammer on your uh, threads and you're trying to shear that away. Now you can put as much weight on it as you want. Okay, when we open the tool back up, the fluid will flow through the valves until they close, and then the rest of the fluid comes in through a check valve. And it fills up the rest of the pool. So it goes back up. Sweet. Now the other thing that you have with jars is you have a pump open force. And, and any kind of stroking tool. Um, the mud goes through the ID, it circulates on the bottom back here. You have a cross sectional area of the mandrel, and it's that piston area times that mandrel that's going to cause that to try to pump open. Now, when it's in a fully open position or in tension, you don't have that pump open force. Now, the other thing is when you're drawing down, if you get your pumps on, you got to subtract that pump open area as well. Okay? So, here we are. This is some summaries. We want to avoid placing the jars in the neutral point. We want to remove the content of the weight on the board. Avoid placing tools with larger OD because if you step above, jars don't work. The jarring only be successful as a force generated by the, the jar is greater than the stuck force. Pretty simple. And that the jar is positioned properly in the BHA. Okay? And that no tongs or slips are closed on the mantle. You know, right here, this is all chrome area uh, or stainless steel, so you don't want to put any uh, mandrel uh, clamps on it. Okay, and when you're drawing, make sure everybody's off the floor because there will be some nuts and bolts or something that somebody left up there that could fall on you in the top. Uh, just be careful of dark objects. Okay. This is that pump open force that all the guys were talking to me about. If I was to take a, a six and a half inch tool, see this kind of orange? If I was to take a six and a half inch tool and I had 2,000 PSI at the jar, not at surface, but at the jar, and I come all the way across, you can see that's almost 40,000 pounds of force. So if I was to move the mandrel, I'd have to sit down 40,000 more pounds before you can get the mandrel to move. Okay? Any questions? I thought you were going to have something. Um, maybe the cover brushes. So a couple times we went fishing this uh, summer. Not the fishing you want to be doing. Um, we had a real, we had real trouble from Halliburton and from well, the life from Cardium of being able to model putting this much force at surface, how much is getting in the bit. Do you guys have any tools that can do that? We have, we have. Uh, you're talking about how much? So if we're like, so the jars went off and we were trying to figure out, well, the jars are this distance back from the bit. Okay. How much of that is transmitted? Right. Now, what we, what we have is we have a jar placement program. Okay. And what the jar placement program does, it calculates how much force you're generating at the jar and what that force is at the step point. Okay. And then it also tells you how much impulse is there as well. Okay. Where were you on that weekend? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many times I got asked that. But uh, we, we, every jar manufacturer has a jar placement program. And they should be able to determine what their impact is at the jar and at the fish and, at the, and what your impulse is like. So we had Rutherford tools in the hole and we were using cardio and we had Rutherford fishing. We just should have been able to run Saturday, that Saturday, no one up here in Canada knew anybody that could run that software. Well, one thing about no the Weatherford people up here, they do not run daily jars. They run the Lee Company jars. Okay. And, and they should have a program. If they don't, 
we could help you model it, but it may not be exact because the engineering specifications are not into our program for lead welds. Close enough. But it'd be close enough. Who shares? Did you say your name? Say again? Who shares the number? Lee. Lee. Yeah. Lee Oilfield. Lee Oilfield. Okay. So here's some troubleshooting. Any, you can call me anytime you want. Well, okay. I, I have your number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just don't want to be stuck again. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, 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 I don't want to call you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can tell you this. The farther away that your stuck force is from your yards, the less impulse. Yeah. And your impulse, because that shock wave is going through, and that shock wave is being absorbed by that drill pipe. Yes, yeah, so we had our jars in the drill string 70 meters back, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, we weren't getting anything, so we went and backed off one of the drilling jars, or fishing jars, I should say, which yeah. got us about 40 meters back from the bed, or were we closer than that? Closer, I think, 30 something. 30 something. And then, yeah, she caught three. Yeah. Then dropped. Okay. So here's some troubleshooting. If you pick up weight, and it's like off weight's incorrect. Okay, in other words, you're not getting it to the jar. Hole drag, same thing. If the hole drag is stopping the, that force getting to the jars, it's not going to work. And trap torque, you know, sometimes you can torque up your string to where your pipe is up against the wall and you're not getting force down to the jars. But there's the key. How much force are you getting to the jars? Mm -hmm. If you're only getting half of it, then that's all that the jars can generate. And then the insufficient stretch of pipe. Okay? And if you get stuck above, then you're down to not going to work. Here's some of our recommendations. May not be for everybody, but avoid placing jars in, in the neutral point. So high stressed area. Here again, you can possibly break them. Jars have multiple mid-body connections and heavyweight and then drill collars. They're the weakest link in that DHA. Right there. Because you've got multiple mid-body connections and they're inside drill collars or heavyweight. We like for two joints to be above and below the jars. That way you get it out of that crossover section in that high stress area. That's just our recommendation. And then you run slowly in tight spots and dog legs and mainly keep the jars fully in tension, no compression. And that's it. Yes, and you probably noticed here with the DHAs, you can see like joints or stand heavy weight on either side of the jars. Yeah, and one joint above your jars is going to give you a lot of impact. Okay, it's not going to give you a whole lot of impulse, but it's going to give you a lot of impact. But um, one joint is better than none, okay, because you've got to have some kind of mass yeah. for those jars to work. Or you or you'll just generate whatever you're pulling. That's all you're going to multiply it by. So if you're pulling 300,000, that's probably all you're going to see. Oh, that's excellent. I thought that yeah, was awesome. Did you make that? I'm gonna have to steal that video.